Okay. What do we got here? Oh. New look, liquid organic mango juice blend. Hey, press, fresh press, not from country. Okay, now let's see what's in this bad boy. Okay, organic mango juice, good start. Organic apple juice, mm. like a filler, whatever it is. Okay, well, it takes the edge off the mango a little bit. Organic lemon juice, I like that part. Okay, so now I'm in the outside of St. Louis, you know, what I mean, in St. Louis. St. Louis supposed to, I just found out St. Louis supposed to have a bunch of stuff. Number one in this, number one in then medical. A bunch of stuff, you know what I mean? Some stuff suffered by Kirkwood, I don't know, someplace outside of whatever. I'll put this here. Um, okay, what am I doing here? Well, this is where all my writing is. <laughs> then I started writing um, I started writing poetry in 71. 1971? I think so. And then I went on. I've been writing. I've been writing since. But uh, back in the late um, late seventies, I wrote a lot of plays. They are all here, downstairs. I don't know if I'm gonna stay in this room. Um, I don't know if the acoustics is gonna be right for what what's going on. But let me take the picture. Very good. Excellent. Let me not advertise. I'll leave that right there. I'll advertise them. All right. So. Um, uh, but uh, coming here, I came by train, of course, and uh, it's an interesting train ride. Had some uh, good people on there. I was talking to this, um, old, well, she must have been a 50s lady, but took about stuff we did. And um, got around to, um, well, I was talking about literature, um, specifically, I mentioned Zora Neale Hurston somehow. Maybe I was talking about Harlem Renaissance. She didn't know about the Harlem Renaissance. I was sort of kind of, okay, but she grew up in Virginia, I think it was, or someplace like that. I think she was going, I forget, I think she was going to Chicago. Anyway, so, um, so this train went from New York down to Indianapolis and up to Chicago. And it's a very scenic route. I like the route. In fact, I, I was sitting next to a woman. Um, she, she was a professional, you know, gymnast, whatever have you, like the Olympic level, whatever have you. She, anyway, we talked. It was very interesting because we both had parallel, not, 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 not an athlete, but she had an athletic family. And, but we have, she's a traveler, you know, she's been to a lot of places. I've been in specifically Laos and a bunch of places that people don't usually go. Anyway, but she she left that professional, you know, uh, gymnast kind of um, kind of thing. Blah blah blah. She's teaching dance now. She loves modern dance and all that stuff. So we started talking because I used to stage manage dances a lot, uh, and, you know, in the in the in the eighties and stuff like that. So it was interesting because we like kindred spirits traveling like that. She's a lot younger than I. Am. I wanted to interview her, but she didn't do it. She didn't want. To, I didn't press her. I just let her go. Anyway, so I was talking to these other 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 people, and I mentioned Zora Neale Hurston. So this other sister was sitting there. She's younger. She's lived to be about her early thirties. Um, anyway, so she's all, Zora Neale was one of her was a Sora, you know, she's in the same sorority, I guess. And um, so we got to talking a little bit. But you know, it's very interesting. She <laughs> she is like totally. She mentioned Hillary Clinton. I don't know. She mentioned this thing. She was working on this. Um, she's part of this. Um, uh, some sort of voting, voting projects, whatever it is. But I was um, political, so I, I was mentioning sort of some voting kind of thing. But she wasn't into that. You know, she, we kept on dodging around. Uh, but one of the things was kind of dodging. She said she was Zora Neale Hurston, she, but she read The Eyes of Watching God. But she hadn't read anything else of Zora Neale Hurston. I read everything Zora Neale Hurston. Didn't know about the Harlem Renaissance, really. It was very interesting. So, so we got to talk. Then the other, there was another guy by the window, and um, at first I was in that seat. Everything switched around early on, and it ended up to where we were. So it was like basically a white guy, um, you know, real like uh, he was a logger. He had a logging thing. Let's I mean, call him a redneck for just for purposes of what's going on. Then you had the young sister, you know, black sister, so called whatever she was doing. Then you had me. Then they had this this um, um, this uh, white girl that was a gymnast, right? Very interesting. And it's going across. But we were engaged, she was asleep, you know, we were engaged. And it ended up, to me and the white guy, if you want to call him redneck, we had more in common than this sister who was like, she was almost oh, very strange, she worked for this shelter or something like that. And she was saying how uh, the men that were there, they were men and they would make poor decisions. And so I was trying to dig down and say, well, what do you mean by that? Did you, did you go to the source of these things? And the white guy was saying the same thing. And she was, now they made poor decisions, blah, blah. And she wouldn't, oh, it was very strange, you know, she wouldn't, she kept on interrupting, but you know, when we were trying to make a when I was trying to make a point, she would interrupt me. Then she was accusing me of interrupting. It was, 
and uh, ended up made a white guy would agree more like the voting is like absolutely but like it's a you know, far away to happen she's going through this whole thing and, uh, anyway it was it was super interesting <laughs> put it this way this trip has been interesting because I met people in Virginia about voting I've been doing a lot of, a lot of little political things to all these people like that and people are just not informed you know and talking about um, um, not informed. Uh, the reason why I'm talking this right now because you know I've been listening. There's a lot of this new polling out that Biden's been slipping. We knew that was going to happen, but the funny thing is that, and I'm here at, at, at JB's place, and you know he's informed. You know, he's you know, he's he. You, I'll interview him. You'll see what he is. But uh, he's still informed by the same NPR. They sort of cycled. They're sort of same polling people, whatever have you. And they don't get out of that that echo chamber, that bubble. And that's the problem, but we're early on in the campaign, so things have changed. But anyway, Biden, the upshot is that Biden is slipping in the post. We knew that was going to happen. And people are, I won't say shocked, but it's like people are just not informed. But this is why I guess it's good that we have a long election season. Uh, because I'd say just wait until, uh, basically wait until December. January you know, when they first have the first uh, caucuses to see where things stand. stand you know, they're dumping on Tulsi Gabbard now because well, she's doing service someplace in Indonesia or something like that. So it's going to be interesting how things shake out. But one of my real you know, talking about this, I think right now what's supposed to happen politically, you're politically sophisticated, what you're supposed to do, not to be, be chicken, picking sides like Biden or Sanders or, or Elizabeth Warren for some reason. Eh? Uh, I'm not feeling her at all. Uh, but what you're supposed to do, to me, you're supposed to, like, I'm, I'm, I'm more for Tulsi Gabbard right now. Andrew Yang lost me in the foreign affairs, so, like, like leave him to the side. I'm more with Tulsi Gabbard right now. Not for, not that you want Tulsi Gabbard to be the president, or maybe you do, or Andrew Yang to be the president, or Marianne Williams to be the president. But you want their, uh, do you want their positions in the debate, in the, in the, in the, um, uh, in the atmosphere, in, to, to pierce that echo chamber that people on, keep on uh, um, uh, repeating, you know what I mean? You want their positions to be in the platform. You want to, uh, you want the DNC to be wiped out. That's what you do uh, in these early stages that we were, we're in, um, uh, we're in September now? No, almost September. Let's say September, October, November, these three months. You know, this is to shake these, to make the DNC come to as 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 Hillary would, Hillary Clinton would say. We want to heal. We want to bring the DNC to heal. You know, Democratic National Committee to heal. Those kind of things. So the objective right now is really not to pick a winner, but to influence who the winner. Now you know the winner is going to be Bernie. So you want to influence him right now. I sort of just let me say this real quick. Now I end up here, right? I saw this thing with Bernie he'd done with these uh, young young black people. Oh, here we go. People of color. Yeah. You know, in in Miami. Something like that. But it was a nothing session. It was the same talking points. You can't tell me these new these young black people didn't have something else to say from student loans. They used to talk about immigration. They told the same talking points you hear in these echo chambers, right? Nobody talked about reparations. Huh? How can it be young black people? Look, they just don't know. It's not in the it's not in the lexicon yet. So right now you're supposed to be pushing your position to be in the conversation because they'll keep on talking about the same talking points all the time. You know, they didn't talk about war, interventionist war and if they would have the good, they didn't talk about nothing like that. You know, or even the robots taking over like Andrew Ng would say. You know, they didn't talk about those kind of things that, 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 that should be discussed. The young people talk about the same Bernie talking points. So it was just a, 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 a oh see Bernie's talking to young people and this is diverse people and da 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 and this is going to push and push. No. No, this is the time, these next three months, is to put in the most out, not outlandish, the most, your, your points, your way out there points, to push it into the mainstream so they can stop talking about the stuff they usually talk about. That's the point. That's the point for me. T, from the Patterson, taking the train to Tibet, let you know what I only suspect from ADES. Look, it's another one. ADES, the reality clan of the ADOS that would be the American descendants of chattel slavery.